Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the fun show here at Big TV. Michael Salwin at the Kira Keyboard is wishing you a happy Purim and a happy St. Patrick's Day, which across the border in Boston is referred to as Evacuation Day. No. But we can call it St. Patrick's Day here. Spells Harrigan. A shame has never been connected with Harrigan. That's someone. No one here named Harrigan. No. <laughs> Thank you, sir. This is the, um, what the heck is it? This is the March 13th right. edition of the fun show here. They say and, both in May for, for and, us. Yeah. Um, tomorrow morning, uh, I'm sure you're all aware, we have a blizzard which is being oversold immensely in my opinion they even the national news and the local news is talking about this terrible threatening blizzard and, and then you and listen and they say <clears throat> we might get 12 to maybe 16 inches of snow as if since when was 12 inches of snow something to worry about that's right i mean uh, yeah. we're getting awfully we're getting awfully um, pampered and weak these days <laughs> uh, i'm saying because when I was a child, I walked through 74 feet of snow, That's uphill correct. both ways to school every day, and I, we never called it off. I remember that. Yeah. Right. That was That's, nice. That's the stories we always tell our yeah, grandchildren on things. Yeah, um, I would like to uh, advise people um, that on March 26th, the good Lord willing and the creek don't rise, yeah. the um, Brookline Kesawake Sister City program in association with a lot of other people, including Big and uh, the League of Women Voters and First Parish and uh, the Brookline Office on Diversity, will be holding a very interesting panel at the Senior Center um, from 3 to 5 p.m. on a community forum on immigrant and refugee rights which is a very appropriate time to be doing that. Um, it will let us know something about what it's like to be an immigrant in America now, some of the fears and apprehensions, and some of them which are justified and which are perhaps slightly overblown. We can only pray, but the Community Forum on Immigrant and Refugee Rights, March 26th, Senior Center, three to five, free and open to the public. Are you going to be there that day? Of course. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Okay. Um, Go ahead, I know uh, where I'm going to be tomorrow. I'm going to be curled up in my nice warm house. Yes. In spite of my telephone call from Eversource Electric today. Oh, yes, today. They, they, telling me, in essence, there's a terrible storm coming, and if you rely on your electricity to refrigerate your medicines or life-saving devices or anything else. In other words, if you need electricity, you should either make alternate arrangements, <laughs> source arrangements, or move to another uh, location. Asian, like and Miami Beach if, or someplace. If it yeah. weren't a robocall, I would have been tempted to say to them, okay, I you tell you. me in advance where you expect your system to fail, and then I'll know where my alternate location is. And then if you bought it, a generator. Well, it turns out the only person I personally know who owns a generator for those situations is in coal rain, and that seems a little long. Oh, it does seem. A little far to yeah. go okay. on things. And, so, and, But it's, they also said, don't step on wires that are on the ground. Don't step on down wires. Right. Yeah. And uh, you listened to the whole thing. You're a very dedicated well, listener. I, I, I hung up I, by I that like point. I don't like them, so I wanted to hear everything they had to say. You know? <laughs> Anyways, uh, I had long. I had long. Let, let me before ask. that hung up. Yeah, you you got off of that. Yeah. But what what about all these people that are thinking about tomorrow who work for a living, 
not like us. Well, are they, I mean, many I mean, are happy they don't have to go to work, yeah, and then they, the people who actually yeah. work directly off the profits of their businesses are uh, upset. What about the MBTA tomorrow? That's um, They've been preparing for this for two years, haven't they? Well, in a sense, I mean, they were out yesterday practicing with their no, new track plows. Yeah, I saw that. So we'll, we'll see how that a works. A homemade invention, invention. Frankly, they've been doing... They've been doing much better since those two years ago, you know. But yeah, people the other thing is it's going to be cold, so this isn't going to do what March snow usually does, which is quickly melt away. Right. I mean, when did the snow that's out there now fall? It fell um, Friday? Friday, yeah. And by Saturday, it was not a problem at all, right. you know. But this one's not going to be because it's not going to reach freezing apparently for the rest of the week and it's going to be wet and, and heavy and uh well that's funny because usually if it's very cold you get light fluffy snow right so it's, this whole thing is, is i mixed. think it may be down south it's going to be wet because it's going to change to sleet yeah well uh, bruce will tell me uh, my son who lives down in virginia he'll give us a call <laughs> He'll tell you about the snow from He'll Virginia. Tell me, uh, we checked this. He we checked that. He grew up here, but he's down there now. It's always nice that to have a son who's an expert on everything. <laughs> he <laughs> right. <laughs> he knows a lot. I give him that. You know. All right. Well, the other the other issue, which is uh, fairly fairly um, upfront at the moment, yeah. is the issue of what they don't want us to call Trump Care. Um, oh boy. The Republican solution um they're going to have to do a little of their classic backing and filling and hemming and hawing and redefining the english language which is the one thing that they've gotten good at um <laughs> they've got so many synonyms for a lie to make it sound like anything but a lie um but they uh, the congressional budget office which for many many years has been respected by Democrats and, and Republicans and independents. It's the one thing that most people in Congress agree on is the veracity and quality of the Congressional Budget Office. And now the um, Trump people are saying, it's well, rigged. you can't believe anything they say. Yeah, it's lies. Um, but what they do say and what we do believe is that their great uh, plan we're going to insure everybody, and it's going to be cheaper. Um, 24 million people. Anyways. 24 million people lose their health insurance. I you know. Goodbye, everybody. Yeah. And, of course, the Republicans say, well, if you don't have health insurance, you get sick. Just die already. <laughs> it's cold outside, baby. Yeah. Just, just die. What so the heck? In any case, I have a little, um, a little thing here to explain to you the Trump health care package. Ah. The American Medical Association is weighed in on Trump's health care package. The allergists were in favor of scratching it, but the dermatologists advised not to make any rash moves. The <laughs> gastroenterologists had a gut feeling about it, but the neurologists thought the administration had a lot of nerve. <laughs> Meanwhile, obstetricians felt certain everyone was laboring under a misconception while the ophthalmologist considered the idea short-sighted. Very good. Pathologists yelled over my dead body, while the pediatricians said, oh, grow up. The psychiatrist thought the whole idea was madness, while the radiologists could see right through it. The surgeons decided to wash their hands of the whole thing, and the internists claimed it would indeed be a bitter pill to swallow. The plastic surgeons opined that this proposal would have put a whole new face on the matter. The podiatrists thought it was a step forward, but the urologists were pissed off at the whole idea. Yeah, me too. Anesthesiologists thought the whole idea was a gas, and those lofty cardiologists didn't have the heart to say no. In the end, the proctologists won out, leaving the entire decision up to the asshole in Washington. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. The Trump health care proposal. Yeah, I like that. That's yeah. good. Okay. So, um, everybody, is, everybody sounded off. You had 24 all. million people going to lose their health insurance. So, uh, well, it doesn't mean a lot to, to them in, in, that, in, in the Republican Party. I mean, they're busy. One thing must be done, it must be repealed. 
we yeah. gotta have Obamacare or whatever they call it has to be repealed so we can call it Trump Care. That's the main. No, thing. no, they don't want to Trump. They really don't want to call it Trump Care. I think they, they should. specifically no. The White House has specifically said, "Call it anything you want, but don't call it Trump Care." Okay, so they will. The, no, it, it's actually it will come to be called, I think, um, a very appropriate name, Trump No Care. Trump don't care. Trump don't care. That's not bad. All right, I'll yeah. buy that. Yeah. Okay. Trump don't care. Right. Um, you know, poor people. Um, they're doing away with the um, with the thing that says you either buy insurance or you pay a tax. Right. Um, but that's going to be cut. That out. is to the direct benefit of Trump's friends, the one percent, and the insurance know. companies. Yeah. Um, and the insurance companies haven't quite made up their mind. Interestingly, they haven't. Most of them come out against it or for it. Uh, so far. Well, they make money both ways, don't the, they? The yeah. American Medical Association has definitely come out against it's it. And several Republican senators have, have warned their Republican House colleagues, don't be in a hurry to vote for a bill that can't pass the Senate. You vote for this thing, and we lose our majority 2018 in, in is 18. coming soon, yeah. <laughs> And I mean, that's Republicans telling them that. But they won't vote. They won't vote with their party. This, this, these people who are making these statements. I don't. The Republicans. Oh, these senators. I yeah. think they'll vote against it. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you think know, the thing is, you only need. You only it's yeah. in the Senate. You only need one, four or five votes. Oh, yeah. In the House, where they, they need more. In the House, it's, yeah, it's sort of a loss. And yeah. besides. All those people in the House are wimps. The, <laughs> the best quote of the week on the Republican don't care bill was from our own congressman, Joseph Kennedy, because um, r this speaker of the House, whoever this fellow is, yeah, is speaker of the Ryan. House, is that his name? Yeah, Paul Ryan. Uh, he got up and passionately said that, you know, um, Obama, you know, the 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 horror of Obama is about to come to an end. end. Right. And he referred, apparently in a committee meeting or on the floor of the Senate, of this being an act of mercy. And uh, Joe Kennedy, I wish I'd brought it actually with me. Joe Kennedy said, "You must read different scripture than I read, <laughs> because in my scripture, mercy is, you know." taking care of the poor and the downtrodden and looking out for your fellow man and, uh, and, uh, and you know, being compassionate and helpful. This bill is an act of malice. malice. Not mercy. An act of malice. malice. It is. Very good, Joe. You made us proud. You made us proud. Okay. Yep. Now, um, well, I could get into the, we could save it for after the little play. Yeah, we got a couple minutes. We could we could mention something about uh, the casino business. Um, oh yes, yeah. yes, yeah. You tell me that the uh, the uh, Indian tribes, the, the, the tribes, Connecticut, out of Connecticut Indians. Yeah, Connecticut. Is it the Indian. Pequots or the uh, something like? Is it the Pequots or is yeah. it no, the? There's uh, another name. That's um, um, there's another name. I don't know, Wampanoags or... No, uh, it ain't, um, it's not the Wampanoags. Anyway, it's either Foxwoods or it's Mohegan Sun, right. one or the other. Yeah. You tell me they're suing Mr. Wynn. Right, who's building um, a casino in Everett. Because they say that, that their proposal in East Boston should have won um, and that it was this, something duplicitous went on. Well, the irony of that is they're clearly suing the wrong people, because <laughs> the people they need to sue are Mr. Crosby and this corrupt gaming commission. Which is what the uh, reporter said in the article. Oh yeah, okay. But I, it's not, it's not that they, that they can have this thing dragged out up until this this section comes up, and then they'll sue these people too, <laughs> which can drag the thing out some more. But 
but it costs them money. He doesn't seem too worried about it. He says the building is going on. No, I'm uh, not talking about when. I'm talking about costing the, the Indian tribe money. Well, ev- Where do they have the money to throw into that? Evidently, they, they want... Maybe not- it's not really the Indians who are doing it. Maybe it's their their backers. Maybe that's it, the guys with the money. You know, another corrupt cartel. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got the Springfield. They're, they're fighting that, too, the Foxwood. And in <clears throat> the meantime, what's Connecticut doing, Michael? They're building, they're preparing to build another, uh, what do they call these places? Uh, casinos. A cas- oh, it's a casino. <laughs> okay. They're going to build one 20 miles from Springfield, Springfield, 20 miles away. I didn't even realize Springfield was only 20 miles from the Connecticut border, well, but, well, never. more power to them. I, I think, you know, I think well, if it puts a lot of people to work. If we're dumb enough to allow um, a half-witted governor to appoint <laughs> Mr. Crosby to head the Gaming Commission, we deserve, then we deserve to get outflanked. All right, good enough. You, you want to read the original? Okay. okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the B.I.G. Unrehearsed Thespian Society's presentation for this evening. Um, this is really from, from the vault. And the crypt. Inter- from the crypt. The crypt. The crypt is behind the vault. Right. right. You have to work through the vault to find the crypt. The crypt. Okay. Dying. Tales from the Crypt. Ah. That was a pretty good show in its yeah, day. Yeah, it was. Which in its day was a long time ago. A long time. In any case, this is entitled DDD, Destruction Deficit Disorder. And it is a television interview. Um, and the interviewer is Mr. Crispin Antigonus. And the guest is Travis Finkelbaum. Okay. And, and the lights come up. Action. Uh, we've heard a lot about you, Mr. Finkelbaum. Uh, is Travis all right? Oh, I don't care. Oh, ah, okay. I, I, you like to break things, huh? That's what I do. Why? It's personal, sir. It's personal. Did you, did you train for this, this kind of work? Well, no. Uh, seems I have fallen into it and oh. broke a leg in the oh. process. Uh, Why? Your line is a psychological disorder? Yes. Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> you, you're trained for that, yeah. No, I seem to have fallen into this and broke a leg, you say. Uh, which I just said. Yeah. A psychological disorder, then. No, a physical attraction. Oh, so it wasn't evolutionary. No, it just felt right. Relationships with parents, siblings, and friends? It has to do with mortality. A question of longevity? Everything has a finite span. You mean death ends existence? Yes, basically. Do you still live in that brick apartment building? No. Unfortunately, it collapsed last week. Ah. Well, well, let's get this straight. Sure. All right. You advocate riot, revolution, war, and anarchy. Anything that's destructive. Ah, terrorism, vigilantism, assassinations, arson? I suppose in a broad sense. But that could lead to the ruination of our society and maybe even civilization. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> uh, what about our little, little children and innocent babies? What, while scientists are worrying about the end of the universe? You sound like the Nazis. When there was too much evil, God brought forth the flood. Uh, are you the leader of a cult? No! <laughs> uh, well, I guess that's, that means no, okay? D- do you feel better now? No. I wanted no. to smash your chair. Oh. You want to end the uh, world as we know it? <sighs> What's close to me? You've been jailed for your malicious destruction, you all. That's aware. true. Uh, lots of concrete and steel involved. I kept busy. Your fellow inmates? They applauded my efforts. Couldn't have accomplished much there. Well, I broke plumbing. I set fires. Well, it added to your sentence? They sent me to a mental institution. Oh, that's it, huh? Well, uh, for the criminally insane, maybe, huh? Uh, no. For treatment and parole. 
And now your new book has been published. Helping to Destroy Society. It's subtitled Starting Over. And you completed the first draft in prison. Correct. Uh, then came the agent's critique and the rewrite. If you don't get it right the first time, give it the hell up. <laughs> so they printed it with all the typos, misspellings, and grammatical errors. Why it? not? It proves I'm human. You've been helping to create some interest, though. Well, I burned down a bookstore that refused to sell my book. That would create a stir. And I beat up a person who reviewed it poorly. Unusual. Uh, you didn't refer much to your childhood. Well, I was an only child. Dad left us when I was five. We were on welfare for years. Uh, did you have problems at school or with playmates? <laughs> I say I was rebellious early on. It was trouble. Only when I was forced to do things I disagreed with. Uh, an illustration, perhaps. Uh, Travis? I always liked writing poems, even during math class. Like two and two and four, a book fell on the paper. Uh, doesn't seem to rhyme. But it was important to me. The teacher admonished you? My classmates laughed at my embarrassment. But children can be cruel. They did not understand my needs. And at such an early age, you already decided on your life's work. It wasn't difficult. There was so much that needed to be undone. <laughs> you prepared by experimenting in school and at home. And now, a message from our sponsor. Is that absolutely necessary? Yes. Cameraman, don't cut to commercial if you want Crispin to live. I'm watching the monitor. Thank you. This time, I'll deliver the message. Ah. May I have a camera, please? Members of the listening audience, I am the only member of DDD, which stands for Destruction, Disorder, and Death. This is what I bring to you. It's what I've prepared myself for, and I believe you all await me. It's no longer a matter of civil rights, race relations, a polluted environment, drug addiction, nationalism, universal education, international peace, improved forms of government, and all that. We're beyond all that. Too many religions preach a better world through good works and prayer. My question is, why wait? And so that's what I'm here for to make it happen as soon as possible. It's going to take me a while, because there are so many of us. But I'm a busy bee, and I expect to have a greater effect on your lives sooner than you think. Time to get back to our program. Uh, everybody knows that mankind is beset with many problems, Travis. Listen, I just presented my treatise in a ringing manifesto. But you didn't sing or dance or tell a joke. They all heard me. It will all blow over in a few days. Well, listen, I can be funny if I want to, but this is not a comedy. <laughs> we always get the most stable people on this show. Do I sound like a freak to you? Well, you do have a bizarre track record, my friend. Are you trying to tell me the viewers switch channels? Yes. I'm saying this is the fun show. Well, I am prescient. <laughs> you can read the future, yes, and we do like a chuckle. <laughs> isn't that candy? <laughs> <laughs> Destruction isn't very humorous, I'll tell you that, Travis. Ça dépend. Oh, that means it depends, huh? French. Hmm. We... Well, we've had enough of, of the gloom and doom, if you want to know. So have the undocumented immigrants. And the folks waiting to learn their fate with uh, Trump care or whatever. I have even mentioned all the Middle East bombings daily. Still, it's a, a whole a holiday time, huh? Well, there's Purim and uh, Queen Esther and all. Yeah, and St. Patrick's Day. I suppose I could break down and celebrate both. Well, thanks. Well, Chag <laughs> Sameach. Chag Sameach, huh? And Aaron Gobra. Blackout. Blackout.
Well, there you are. <laughs> That's a great epic. Okay. Okay. Very good. There must have been something about my performance that made you lose your way several times. Yeah, I, I, did. I did lose my way. Okay. Here's a lifeline for troubled veterans. Okay. There are roughly 500,000 veterans with less than an honorable discharge, and including more than 100,000 who left the service during the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Any indication of the time range of these? Well, uh, uh, are these uh, younger or all living veterans? These are supposed to be living veterans. The government doesn't know what percentage of these veterans have acute mental health problems. But it became apparent after the Iraq drawdown that many were struggling. Okay. What they did was something very unprecedented. Representative Mike Kaufman, a Colorado Republican who served in the Army and the Marine Corps, said in an interview on Friday, here are people who have come back from war and are having difficulty. And you strip all support from them, and they throw them out of the military. Since 2009, the military has discharged at least 22,000 combat vets since 2009 who had mental health problems or traumatic brain injuries for alleged misconduct, according to Mr. Kaufman's office. The misconduct ranges from serious felonies to minor administrative violations. So Mr. Kaufman has spent years trying to convince other lawmakers and the Department of Veteran Affairs that the government needs to do a lot more to prevent veteran suicides and homelessness and some efforts have been successful, but the crisis remains. And this guy is still a Republican? <laughs> well, last year, tw uh, sadly, 20 veterans per day on average committed suicide, according to the VA, and tens of thousands too, of veterans... Too, way too few, according to the Republicans. Yeah, uh, and tens of thousands of veterans sleep on the streets on any given night. But they got a new policy. They got a new policy, and the new policy will allow veterans with less than honorable discharges who can attribute their struggles to service-related health problems, including traumatic brain injuries, et cetera. So to that seek sounds care. good, but how are they meant to prove that? That's part of How are they meant to prove that with no access to the VA? That's Dr. Shulkin's job, who's becoming the new head of the VA. To, lay out the guidelines for this and don't Mr. worry they'll be impenetrable and impossible well <laughs> anyway I mean uh, after all it was the Republicans who sent everybody off to war and then closed at least one VA hospital in every state in the United uh, States and when Obama tried to reinvest in the VA medical system they voted him down every time and I didn't even get on to the crime and the adolescent brain. All right, well, let's talk quickly. Let's go quickly. Good night, Irene. Good night, Irene. Irene, good night. Irene, good night. We'll see you in our dreams. Good night, everybody. Feel better, Irene. We'll be back next week, same time, same station. Bonjour. In the middle of the snowstorm. <laughs> what, we'll be back in the middle of the snowstorm? Yeah, that's right. I now, hope. Uh, let's hope the snowstorm's yeah. not around in a week. Uh, okay. We, I couldn't take it. We'll bring some snow in the pail upstairs. <laughs> yeah, okay.